Hello everyone and welcome back to the Northern Tool and Equipment Tools for the Trades Rat Rod Go-Kart Build-Off Month 3. I'm Dylan McCool, YouTube content creator and restorer of cars, trucks, and plenty of junk. And I'm your host on this journey. Now, the students at Lakeville North and Minneapolis Public Schools have been hard at work building their rat rod go-karts. Frames have been bent, North Star 740cc engines are being mounted, and that classic cart look that so many of us know is starting to take shape. These students are in a critical phase of the build-off and their mentors are pulling out all the stops to help carry the teams through. Greg Stedman, the COO and a critical member of Petty's Garage since 1994 and celebrity bike builder Billy Lane are asking tough questions to help guide these high schoolers to the finish line. Although some of their questions may have the students questioning their early plans and rethinking their next steps. Luckily, we get to be a fly on the wall for these conversations. Let's take a look. Hey guys, I'm, I'm Greg Stedman here, CEO of Petty's Garage, and been a former crew chief with the NASCAR side. Uh, we've been a mechanic and and worked on the race cars here for a long time, and we build a lot of custom cars here. So interested to see what you guys have done for the project. Uh, I got a few pictures here, so show me what you got. We'll look at the pictures you have, and I'll ask some questions, and we'll see if we can get you headed in a good direction. So, I guess to start. We, up the, in the front, we, it's a straight chassis right now, but we plan on taking the front and notching it in so it tapers in the front so it's not square. And then we move back, we have these two little roll bars right here uh, next to the seat. And in the seat, we have a base plate going all the way across and then one plate coming up that's supported by a couple pipes. And then if we move back a little more, we have two pipes that go all the way across the frame so with a base plate underneath to help support the engine. And obviously that's where the engine is bolted. And then in the back, we aren't really sure what we're doing with the axle yet, but we're gonna try to mount it above the frame. So it's a kind of a straighter line from the uh, crank to the Sprocket, crank crank sprocket, yeah, crankshaft to the sprocket. The other question I have was, would you do you think front brakes or rear brakes are better? Um, probably for all the complications of everything, it looks like with what you got with steering and the and the hubs you got, the rear brake will be su sufficient for what what the project is. I think that's the most stable and the, and the, the easiest thing to mount on the axle and and to to mount front brakes, you end up having to do hydraulics and a lot of different things there. Um, so I think the rear brake is sufficient. All right, thank you. There's no rules building rat rods. Just cut it and make it. <laughs> you go over to the scrap bin over there at the back of the shop and get dig out of that, and that's what you find to use. We're in Minneapolis, and this is our update. <laughs> What is a good gear ratio that will go out from the jack shaft to connect to the axle? You know, generally speaking, I think you're going to want to go from um, about one to one to five, one to six, somewhere in that ratio, depending on uh, you know, obviously on your power. If you're making, you know, the thing with the turbochargers, they take a minute to spool up if you do turbocharge, but depending on on the power you're putting out, I would think I would start around one to five. And you, if you feel like it's starting out really slow, you could always. You know, I think we talked before. You're going to use a chain drive, correct? Off of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's easy enough to change a sprocket in, in, a, in a different length chain. So I would start somewhere around one to five, and go from there. So we were just wondering. It's awesome having all of your input, and it'd be really awesome if you could come up here maybe for a day and help us out. Maybe give us some tips and show us some stuff whenever that work out for you. I definitely want to come up there. Uh, I, I might, I might want to stay longer than a day. You know, that's, I think it'd be really hard for me to see what you all have done and then have to leave and not and not be able to see it progress more than just a day's worth. But I would definitely love to come up there. You guys yeah, yeah. Eight degrees today. Yeah. Not not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> what was it eight? Yep. Yeah. Oh wow! It was fifty-eight when I rode into work this morning. Uh, Lucky day. Uh, but no, I, I'm not. 
I don't love the the free the, the Minnesota cold, but I'll 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 put myself through it for you at any time. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. When you think about the challenges these students are facing, it's honestly amazing to see how far along they are. And in fact, after the instructors take attendance and reviews the day's work list, each team really only gets less than one hour a day to work on their carts. With upcoming holiday breaks, President's Day, spring break, and graduation on the horizon, it's really officially crunch time. These students must remain focused to cross that finish line. I know they can do it. Plus, a visit from Billy Lane in January might help too. I signed up for shop class because I was always interested into cars and just like growing up with my dad we would always work on them in his like at, at the garage or something so I would just like always find cars interesting so I was like I would just join it at school and just learn more about cars. And I think first we were looking at uh, like an I-beam suspension like most hot rods rat rods have um, and so yeah. we were looking at some you know smaller length ones from like lawn tractors things like that um, and then we actually got some donated parts from a Polaris so we kind of got sidetracked there, but we're not, we're not uh, definitive on either side yet. I think one of the biggest insights was when we talked to Billy Lane today, he was helping us figure out how to turbocharge the engine, and he was giving us a whole lot of information on like what we might not have thought of, like how the engine overheats or it can get really warm, and how we have to take into account a different way that the air is gonna come in and out of, out of the engine. Thanks for joining me to see the progress these schools have made and how they continue solving problems as a team. I'm Dylan McCool and I'll see you back here for the month four update. Until then, we need you to help get the word out on what these students are up to. Here's how you can help. First, you can share the video. It takes only a few seconds. And by sharing it, you just may inspire a student to take a shop class or explore a career in the trades. Second, you can go and subscribe to the Northern Tool YouTube channel so you never miss another update.